Hi, I just want to quickly address some of the small changes that have been made to the Node Editor since the 12.5 update to DaVinci Resolve. First of all, I just want to show you that the previous video is still entirely relevant, so there's nothing that's been removed. There's only been some small additions made to speed up and simplify your workflow. So first of all, in the top left corner of the editor, you can now quickly switch between selection and navigation. With this simple option, we can now click and drag to select multiple clips and then perform the same function but with the hand tool in order to navigate the node editor itself. Next, in the top right corner, we have the ability to indicate where we land when we switch between clips on the timeline. So by default, it's set to last adjusted node, which means that if you've been tweaking your grades, you can come back and keep tweaking them, but maybe you're working on the noise reduction of every clip and your noise is always on the first node. So in that case, you can set that up and you will always be landing on the same place whenever you switch between clips. If you click on the nodes menu at the top, you have a couple of small additions. So we now have shortcuts for jumping between previous and next nodes inside of the editor. And we now have a new function and shortcut extract current node E, which is really helpful if you want to very quickly shuffle the order of your nodes. And you don't want to have to do this process in which you have to laboriously disconnect your links, move nodes around and then pop them into a different place. Now you just have to click the letter E, which will pop your node out of that order, reconnecting the broken link between the preceding node and the following, which then allows you to move your extracted node anywhere you need to. We also now have the option to right click on a node and place it into HDR mode, which enables us to work with high dynamic range footage. And lastly, at the very bottom of our lookup tables list, which we're looking at in later videos, we now also have the DaVinci CTL option. This is necessary for those people who are using the DaVinci ACES color signs inside of their project settings. And that's all there is to it. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.